Hey guys, I thought I would drop in real quick with a midweek video. This is how to install the heavy lugs on the end of the battery cable that goes through the tunnel on this Porsche 911. Check it out. And when I pulled this battery cable through the tunnel, I did not put the ends on it. I was really concerned that the ends were gonna make it too difficult to pull through. So I didn't include ends on either side. Here's the wire out of my car. It's a shorter section because I, I relocated the battery and it made it a little shorter. But this is about two gauge wire or whatever the metric equivalent is. And here is a copper lug that goes on the end. So you just slide the two together and you could potentially solder this, but that's probably not a good idea because this is high current power right to the starter and solder is not a great conductor. So you're just gonna create heat and voltage drop with the solder. So the best way to do these big lugs is to mechanically crimp them down and then cover it with heat shrink. So because I'm a DIY guy, I didn't spring for the expensive hydraulic crimpers, um, but I did get something that has the right shape to it. Uh, this tool right here is meant to be used with a hammer, but I'm gonna do something else. Uh, it's a spring-loaded device and it has the correct dies to put the dimple right in the terminal so it grips the wire. It holds the terminal like that. You snake the wire in and then you would just whack it with a hammer. And I like that if you have a real solid surface like concrete floor or something, you could whack this pretty hard. It would put several tons of pressure on there and it would probably hold the wire just fine. But because of my predicament, the car is already, the wire is already assembled in the car. I don't really have room to be swinging hammers in there and especially under the car. Plus there's nothing firm to back it up against. I'm not gonna set this up against the car and, and try to hammer it. Uh, you just can't create the pressure. So I'm going to rig up a hydraulic system to compress this without actually paying for the hydraulic tools. You don't see me use the MIG welder very often, but that is what it is used for. Uh, it's really good at doing quick frames like this. So I'm going to try to crimp something. This is for my TIG welder. This wire has kind of broken the heat shrink off and it's getting a little bit frayed. You can see some of the, the connections are, are off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this and put a new terminal on and then give it a pull test. This is about the same size wire as the starter cable on my car. I'm gonna slide this heat shrink on now. I think it'll go over the terminal too. Well, it's kind of tight. So it's better to put it on the cable first. This is not your Home Depot variety heat shrink. This is by uh, Raychem and it is double wall, so it means it's extra thick, and it has adhesive on the inside. So when you melt it, it uh, actually glues itself to the wire. It provides a lot more strain relief, and it prevents any air to get into the joint where it could cause corrosion. So this stuff is the good stuff. So I'm not gonna lie, this is dangerous. The problem with this and the reason why it's dangerous because if this thing slips out of the frame, it's gonna come out pretty quick. There's a lot of energy stored in this frame, that's why I made it as thick and strong as possible because the amount of energy that's stored in here is really uh, a function of the force and the distance that it sort of stretches. So you wanna keep that distance that it stretches to a minimum. And so I'm comfortable doing it. I'm comfortable with the welds. So I've centered that right on the terminal and I'm gonna load this in this way.
wires in. Okay, I'm starting to see it misaligned a little bit. So it's, it's kind of turning this direction. So I'm watching this junction right here really carefully as I push. I think it's crimped. Let's just check it out. Put a really big depression in there. I uh, don't know if it's good or not. See the backside kind of kept it in a V and then this thing just drove right into it. Put a big dimple. Um, so next thing to do is just to test it for pull strength. It doesn't really matter how it looks. It just matters how well it's connected. Here's the ground cable coming all the way up to this. Up here is a, a pull-up bar. It goes across there. Uh, not that I do a lot of pull-ups, but I know this will support my weight. So it's up there with some chains. I'm going to hang on it. I feel like the insulation's coming off. Okay, here we go. I think the crimp is good. I'm just stepping on it on the floor. There. So now the insulation went right back to where it was. Yeah, I don't know if you can see here, but the glue is starting to ooze out, which is, is great because now you know that this thing is, is really tight on here. I'm just going to slide the wire in there under the car here. Yeah, wire is in. It's going to keep a little pressure on that. Just kind of bracing it up against this tire stand here, which is kind of handy. I'm watching the alignment once again. This cable is still routed through the tunnel, but I was able to pull it back from the smuggler's box and just use it inside here. It's still kind of cramped spaces, but it's a little easier than working under the hood. Okay, this one looks great. I'll take a picture of this one for you guys, but I'm gonna put the heat shrink on it too, and then we'll get it uh, routed to where the battery's located. Yes. And now you can see where the cable comes out. Right here, this is where the battery is gonna go. And it comes through this big hole. That is now done. That's my way of doing the hydraulic battery crimper for the battery cables. Now, I almost didn't upload this video. I know that it's not going to be popular amongst everyone. If you don't feel comfortable with this method, then by all means, buy the hydraulic crimper. Uh, they're not as expensive as I thought, so if you don't already have some spare metal laying around and a jack, then just buy the $80 crimper. But for me, this is part of my challenge. You know, I'm building this car on a really low budget, and these are the kind of things that allow me to do that. It might seem like an insignificant amount, but when you go through an entire car that has like 5,000 parts or however many parts this car has, those things add up. So that's my mentality. Uh, I'll make a video eventually of all the cringy things, the top 10 cringy things I've done on this car, because there's quite a few. Uh, this is one of those. So uh, not sure how it's going to be received, but I almost didn't upload it. Take care.